Hello, my name is Colby Hart and I'm one of the trainees from Victoria. Today I'm going to be presenting a video of a four-week-old baby who was referred to me with leukocoria. When we looked into the baby's eyes, this is what we saw. This is a photograph that shows a central congenital cataract with a persistent fetal vasculature membrane covering the posterior capsule. We then went on to perform an angiogram, which demonstrates just how vascularized this membrane was that was covering the posterior capsule. We recorded a video of the angiogram, which was able to show that we weren't just dealing with a two-dimensional structure, but in fact there was a persistent hyaloid artery pumping blood into this membrane coming from the disc, as you can see here. Not only this, but there was also a nasal extending vessel for us to manage, which comes into view here. So we took this four-week-old baby to theatre, and this is what the structure looked like down the microscope. You can appreciate that there is a central cataract and a vascularized membrane sitting there behind it. So the first step of the operation was to remove the congenital cataract, and we went about this in the same way that we would go about removing any other congenital cataract. We actually used the vitrector to induce the anterior capsulotomy, this reduced the risk of having the rexus run out around the back and irritate this vascularized membrane. As you can see here, we are creating a nice, large, round capsular rexus, which provides us with plenty of space to access the cataract and subsequently the vascularized membrane. Once we're happy with the size of the capsular rexus, the next step is to then move on to removing the cataract. As you, many of you will be aware, congenital cataracts are much more soft than adult cataracts and, the same, and as such the same surgical techniques are not required. In fact, the only thing that we had to divide and conquer here was our fear of irritating that vascularized membrane prematurely and having it flood the microscope view with blood. Fortunately, that didn't happen here and as you can see the cataract came out quite nicely. Here we're extending the size of the anterior capsulotomy using the vitrector at a low cut rate of around 500. And this is providing us with plenty of room to tackle the posterior capsule membrane. The next step is of the procedure is to go into the eye with an instrument that is very seldom used in anterior segment surgery. This is the intraocular diathermy. You can see it has a sharp tip at the end of the probe and the diathermy is actually generated just behind this tip. And so the technique is to pierce the posterior capsule, go beyond the feeding vessel and then buzz it as demonstrated here. And this is by far the most important step of the operation. Without meticulous cautery of all of these feeding vessels, uh, the membrane would flood the surgical field as, with blood as soon as we started to remove it. So as you can see, we're just working our way around the membrane. We're pretty happy now that we've buzzed all of these feeding vessels, all of them, of course, except for the large vessel coming from the posterior segment. In order to get access to this vessel, we need to perform a posterior capsulotomy. We do this by re-entering the eye with the vitrector and creating the posterior capsulotomy in a very similar manner to the way in which we created the anterior capsulotomy. We're being very careful here not to disrupt the vascularized area of the membrane before uh, using diathermy on that posterior feeder. Uh, we work our way around until we have a nice round opening that we can use um, the vitrector. And we actually use the vitrector here to gobble away some of the avascular membrane that you can see here. As you can see, that posterior feeding vessel is coming into view, and that's a good access that we've uh, managed to obtain by using the vitrector to create this posterior capsulotomy. We then take the intraocular diathermy probe, we plunge that deep into the anterior vitreous and line it up and buzz that posterior feeding vessel, which we managed to do without too much of an issue. Now we uh, can see that the membrane has taken on a white color. There's very little blood flow flowing through it anymore. Uh, so we're happy that now we can start to remove this persistent fetal vasculature membrane with the vitrector. Again, keeping the cut rate at around 500. We continue to work on this until the visual axis is completely cleared and only a small amount of residual peripheral membrane, membrane remains. Once we're happy with this, we crank the cut rate right up to 5000 and perform a thorough anterior vitrectomy. And babies of this age are at a very high risk of developing a fake glaucoma and so a, a very thorough anterior vitrectomy is key to minimizing the chances of post-operative complications. The last step is to enter the eye with the intraocular scissors. 
We use these to straddle the remaining membrane and make a series of radial incisions along it as you'll see. If you watch closely as we make these cuts, the residual membrane fl it flares open and this is because there is still a persistent tangential force which is pulling the membrane into the center of the eye and this force will continue to pull on the ciliary processes and potentially obscure the visual axis if it's left untreated. It's a very important step of the procedure to make these several uh, incisions into this residual membrane. We place a couple of sutures in the eye and this baby will be managed with an aphagic contact lens and have aggressive amblyopia management. Here are the before and after photos. You can see that on the right the visual axis is completely clear now uh, which will give this baby the best chance of some visual potential uh, in this eye down the track. I just want to say a big thank you to the staff at the Royal Children's Hospital in Victoria, particularly to James Elder for allowing me to film his uh, beautiful surgery. Uh, thank you for watching and vote one Colby Hart.